If you've been practicing using De Moivre's theorem to prove trig identities, then you will have come across identities like these. Just take a moment to try to figure out why I've chosen these two in particular to show you. So if you've come across these, you will see that they're like going different ways. In the first one, the green one, we've got a power of sine, and then the signs in here have the multiples of theta in them. And the second one has the multiple of theta here and the power of signs in here. And the way we approach these two identities is slightly different. I just want to take a moment to think again about what this means, because I think it's easy to lose sight of that one. What does it mean for sine to the power of five to equal all of this mess? I've just drawn it on Desmos. So there I have sine to the power of five graphed. It's a nice little graph there, like shark toothy going up and down. And we're saying that it is the same as, not quite that expression, but if we put a sixteenth in front of this expression here, so I'll put brackets around it, and 1 over 16, it's exactly the same thing. We can write that power of sine as an expression of sines of multiples of x. And that's, that being an identity, that is true for every single value of x we put in. We can play around with that, these identities a lot, and you will have seen that there's loads of them, how sine and cos relate to each other in lots of different ways. Okay, let's get stuck in. How does the approach to these two vary? I'm gonna take a step back and talk about how sine and cos are related to powers of E and related to each other. So this was how we defined initially how to do e to the power of a complex number. In this case, pure complex number, it's not got any real part. We've got e to the i theta, and theta turns out to be the argument of the complex number that comes out and the complex number that comes out lies on the unit circle. So if that is the unit circle there, so that has a radius of one, then this complex number here is on the unit circle at an angle of theta. I've written out with an n in there in like a De Moivre's theorem sort of way, that if we raise this first one to the power of n, it's like putting an n in here. It's like doing that angle that argument n times around the circle. I also want to write this out with a negative in there. If we write e to the minus i theta, where is that? Well, if we think about it on the diagram, minus theta will be there. It will have exactly the same real part and the imaginary part has just flipped over. So, equals cos theta minus i sine theta. We can get to that in different ways. I got to that by thinking about the diagram. We can also get to it by just plugging n is minus one in here and using properties of sine and cos because cos of negative theta is just cos of theta. It's an even function and sine of negative theta is minus sine of theta. It's an odd function, that's what we call them, even and odd functions when they have those symmetries. I also want to write this out just for a sense of completion here. I want to write this out with the n in there as well. Cos n theta minus i sine n theta, where I've left spaces for my ends so it can be nice and pretty with my colours. There we go. Okay, I want to flip back now and we're going to do that 
second identity because that one when we've got the multiple of theta out the front is the slightly easier one where we can just use these things directly we don't have to play with them anymore let's do that over here we start with cos of 5 theta plus i sine of 5 theta and we apply De Moivre's theorem to say that that is the same as cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 5. Now to save recording all of the slog through, explain, it, through expanding this out, I'm just going to use the magic of video editing. Ooh, this equals as required. Now just take a look at how I laid that out there. I did this bit vertically so I could spot all the patterns. I have to find C and S just to save a bit of ink. And then this bit is just being really careful with your algebra. You can see I made a couple of mistakes there, but I like to do this, these underlines just to stress where each of the different powers of sign are so I can notice when I make mistakes along the way. There we go, we've done that second identity there. That's as it should be. So that first identity that goes the other way, how do we do that? I'm going to go back to these as I've written down, and I want to try and write these in a different way. So this first one here, I'm going to combine it with the first green one. If I add the two of them together, then these i signs are going to cancel out. And I'm left with e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta equals two lots of cos theta. I'm going to write that slightly more neatly by putting that two instead of over here. I'm going to write it as a half over here. So that I have cos theta as this expression here with imaginary numbers in it. Now we've just gotten to that by adding these two together. But this expression that we've just written down is remarkable. We have an expression with e's in it, imaginary numbers in it, and it equals cos of theta, that cos of theta that you, all, that you learnt about way back when as uh, ratio of sides of, a, sides of a right angle triangle. This has nothing to do with triangles. We've now got it defined as E's and imaginary numbers. Did you think when you first learnt about cos that it was going to end up being that? Probably not. Probably not. We can get sine as well by doing a very similar thing. If I take that first one and minus this one, then the causes are going to cancel out. We end up with a pesky little i that we need to divide by as well because of the i in front of the sign. But the expression is also very neat. We have sine theta in terms of e's and i. How lovely is that? Now, these are sometimes written in terms of a z, where we define if z is e to the i theta, then we can also write these as, well, this is z here, and this is z to the power of minus 1, which we'd also write as 1 over z. And similarly here, 1 over 2i z minus 1 over z. And just defining this in terms of the z is going to make this next step a little easier to write out. That's all it is. Now, since we've got these ones with an n in there, I might as well write these ones with an n in there as well. Let's do that. So we'd end up with a half of i n theta 
there we go. We've got a nice, neat set of identities relating E's and I's and cos's and sines all there, sort of going back and forth. Now all of these you will start to memorize just by doing lots of practice with them. But I'd actually also recommend, if you're preparing for exams, to write these out neatly as I have and stick them up somewhere, maybe on your bedroom wall above your desk, so that they just sink in over time. These ones, that one there, that one there, and these that relate sine and cos to these expressions here are really important and they really need to sink in. So anything you can do to help memorize them is really good. So lots of practice and maybe have them on your bedroom wall as well. Make them pretty to decorate your bedroom. It's nice to have some maths up. Okay, let's put these to use now to prove that green identity there. How are we going to do that? So we need sine to the power of five. So I'm going to use this one here. Let's write that out. Sine to the power of five theta equals this to the power of five. Now, as I said before, we could use this but it's just a little neater if we use this one. So we don't have to write the e to the i theta out every time. So let's use this one. z minus one over z, all to the power of five. Dealing with this, two to the power of five is 32, and i one over i to the power of five, so i to the power of five, think about that, diagram with the unit circle, i is here, i squared, i cubed, i to the power of 4, i to the power of 5 is just i again, cracking. So this is 1 over 32 i, z minus 1 over z to the power of 5. Now what I'm going to do now is expand this bit using the binomial expansion. So again, bit of video wizardry here. Let's go. At this stage, we've got it all in terms of z, and you'll notice some nice patterns, how the plus and minuses flip back and forth, and we've only got odd powers of z in there. We want to write this in terms of sine again, the trig functions, so we can group these nicely, like this. We've got the z to the 5 bits, so the z cubed bits and the z to the power of 1 bits, all nicely factorised so that they look a lot like these here. Let's bring that 1 over 2 to the power of 2 to the power back in. Let's do that here. So I've used one of the 2s out of the 32, so that's become a 16, and I've brought that 1 over 2 to the i back in here, here, and here, so that I can use this and write it in terms of sine again. So we end up with a 16th. This bit is sine of 5 theta. Minus 5 sine of 3 theta plus 10 sine of theta and cross fingers that's what we wanted over here it's exactly that fantastic now that there is quite a lot of steps and especially some fiddles around here it's easy to make some mistakes so it's up to you now to practice this could you just find a similar expression for sine squared, sine cubed, sine to the power of 4, sine to the power of 6, etc, 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 and do the same for cos, cos squared, cos cubed, cos to the power of 4, etc, etc, etc. That's loads of good practice that you can do yourself, and a good way of checking that is to get back on Desmos and just to plug them in. If you do sine to the power of 4, you can type in sine x to the power of 4, 
type in the other other expression that you find and see whether those graphs match up. That's some really good practice that you can do on your own. Good luck with that. And as I say, let all of these sink into your mathematical brain. They're really nice. Good luck. <laughs>